Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm really delighted uh, to, uh, to welcome everybody. Um, for those who don't already know me, I'm Lorna Brio. I'm head of the TSC Careers Department. And today is the first um, TSC alumni talk. Um, so we're really, really happy to uh, present. Um, if, um, if our four graduates or four alumni can just wave when I introduce you because it's a little bit difficult um, there's a lot of facts. I can see there's a lot of students. So first of all, I would like to introduce Mathieu Lapera, who is from, uh, who's manager from the Economic Advisory Department in Deloitte. Secondly, um, this time, uh, is Magali uh, Antoine Crusoe, de, who is a data scientist at Talis. If you could just uh, give us a wave. Magali, are you, uh, I can't see Magali. She's, she must be somewhere. There she is in the middle, okay? Just under, uh, under uh, Mathieu. And then we have Jean Massinani, uh, who is uh, the statisticien uh, from NXP Semiconductors. So Jean, if you could just uh, say hi to everyone or wave, that's fine. And finally, Claire Abo, who is ethics and compliance manager um, from Airbus. So um, today how we're going to work is we're going to have um, two links for the Zoom. Okay, the first link, everybody's connected. Um, so the first link will be with, uh, with Claire and Magali. And then afterwards, after everybody has done a short presentation, um, there will be another link that actually put in the chat. Okay, so if you want to connect afterwards, and if you want to speak to either Mathieu or Jean, you just click on, um, on, that, uh, on that link. Okay. So um, please take advantage of today. This is the first time, so we apologize if there's any uh, technical issues or whatever. Um, but remember, it's a great opportunity for you all to ask your questions, ask some advice. Um, I hope they'll be able to give you great tips so you can be successful uh, in finding uh, your future internship or job. Um, okay, so I think I'm going to leave the floor to, um, I, don't know when, I don't know who wants to start. Mathieu, do you want to start? So hi everyone, I'm a former student of Two School of Economics. Uh, I was five years ago from now. After that, I, do, I did an internship at uh, Microeconomics, which has been bought by Deloitte. And now I'm, I'm working as a manager at Deloitte Economic Advisory. So just to present Deloitte, we work around six core activities. The first one is competition. Second one, competition. We also have a lot of work in regulation. Uh, we also do some uh, impact studies. Uh, um, if you are a fan of rugby, you may have seen a few, few months ago, we work on that to, to help the France to be the next host of the next uh, world, world Cup of rugby and also we use a lot of data to to do our work so we, we have a lot of data scientists in our team to help us all with these five activities well uh, hello everyone so uh, i graduate in uh, 2014 uh, in uh, master market and organization like uh, Mathieu, and uh, uh, in the magister of economic statistician and after this uh, double track, I, uh, I worked during uh, three and a half years in uh, consulting, consulting for um, uh, agro-food uh, businesses. And now I am working for NISP Semiconductors. So um, uh, manufacturing of, uh, of chips, in fact, chips uh, in cars, um, in radio, in, uh, in computers, whatever you want. It is uh, still microchips uh, for now 10, uh, 10 months. And I am statistician in, uh, in the Department of Quality. Perfect, thanks very much, Jean. So um, what's gonna happen now? I don't know, for those who want to stay at the moment with, uh, with uh, Claire and uh, Magali, uh, stay in this link. And if uh, you want to go with uh, Mathieu and Jean, um, if you can press in the second link, obviously you can come back and forward if you want, if you have um, questions for all the alumni. Do you want to, to go back on, uh, on our tracks or to, to ask questions? 
Um, don't know how, how do you want to proceed? Yes, probably if you can talk a little bit a bit like about your uh, yeah, what what have you done after your master? Because like personally, I don't know it's the case for everybody. I'm doing uh, the same master economics of markets and organizations, so it will be interesting for me to see if it's okay for you and for everybody. Of course, okay, uh, Mathieu, maybe uh, we could start with you uh, with the golden track with the lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you want. So uh, right after my Master 2 in Economics, Markets and Organization, I joined um, a small firm who, who was called Macroeconomics, which was a, a consulting firm in competition. So I did this internship and after that they, um, they hired me as an economist. And uh, since I'm working here, so the little firm is now becoming Deloitte, so a little increase in size and scale, but uh, I still do the same job. Uh, the team has grown a lot ever since, but uh, yeah, and now I'm a manager, so I, I try to manage uh, several projects at the same time. It's very interesting. So, and if you want to join us, I have already posted several announcements on the TSC alumni website. Yeah, sorry, Jean, I, I have to do my promo. No, no problem, no problem. Totally legit. Uh, from my side, uh, after, uh, after the, the master, uh, I was hired by uh, a small company in Toulouse, work, uh, in the consultancy, in fact. A uh, company uh, I met during my second internship. So um, one, in, one point uh, when you are doing your internship, uh, leave a good memory uh, to you, to your mentors and your managers, because they can call you back. Uh, so I worked for them during three years. Uh, consultancy in a small uh, small team. Uh, I told you that we were <laughs> we were working uh, specifically on the on the market of uh, lipids, fat, oil, vegetable oil. Uh, so, uh, so we were producing reports, uh, reports for a businessman. So it was, um, it was an activity crossing, uh, many different fields, chemistry, uh, economy, agronomy, uh, and in this team, I was uh, the only economist and the only statistician of the, uh, of the company. So uh, he asked uh, a lot of, uh, of autonomy, in fact. I stay with them during uh, three, a little bit more than three years. Uh, I, I leave them uh, at that point. And now I am, uh, well, uh, uh, I, I was hired by, uh, by NXP Semiconductor for, for contract, in fact, for assessing uh, for assessing the performance of a statistical tool, um, a, an, al uh, an algorithm um, detecting outliers in multivariate dimension. In fact, when you are when you are making uh, chips for for the industry, uh, you are testing your your parts several times before uh, before you uh, you sell it to to the client, and so uh, one chip can be tested. Uh, uh, let's say uh, 10,000 of, uh, of time before it is sold. So it produces a huge, uh, huge uh, a pool of, da uh, of data. And there is uh, a lot of, uh, of process to ensure that the, that the dye is of good quality. So, uh, so the, the component, it, uh, it will, uh, uh, the component based on your die will not uh, uh, will not fall uh, fall during uh, during its usage. So now uh, I am uh, I am assessing the performances of an algorithm uh, produced by another another alumni uh, of the of TSC. In some words, if uh, if some people want to additional details um, because Mathieu was very synthetic uh, or ask 
uh, other questions, uh, feel free. Uh, it is a, a non-formal discussion, so... Um, I have a question for you, Jean. Of course. Of course. Uh, because it's, it's a little bit surprising for me as you did an M2 MO, but now you work like as a, as a statistician. So mm -hmm. did, did the M2 MO like uh, let you uh, learn all the skills you work, uh, you need right now, or did you do other uh, uh, studies after that? Or how was like the transition? Because uh, normally I think of after one M2 MO, there's yes, more fact, people working like Mathieu and not like a statistician. Mm. Uh, in fact, the transition was quite smooth because uh, in the same time that uh, I did the, the Master of Market and Organization, I also follow the Magister of Economic Statistician. So I keep the, uh, both, uh, both skills. Uh, at the end of my master's uh, for, the, for the job search, uh, market of market and, uh, sorry, Master of Market and Organization was not a big help. And when I enter uh, the first company I work for, the, they, ask, they ask me, okay, uh, for this report with your background, what could you add to, uh, to the skill of the team? And the first, uh, the, the more concrete tools that could be applied to, to the report was statistics and data handling and data management, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when, you are, when you are talking, uh, maybe Mathieu will, uh, will give uh, another, um, another sound, but uh, often when, uh, when I met a uh, businessman, uh, people that are, are in the um, in their industry, in the, uh, in, the, and in the business world, in fact, you cannot uh, go to them with very, very uh, complex uh, concept of economics. So uh, opportunity cost, it is a, a threshold. Above, eh, it is a little bit complex. So often you have to, uh, to be quite, um, um, how to say that? Uh, you have to keep things simple uh, to, for your client in, a, in your doing a, a consultancy. In my experience, maybe uh, Mathieu can say uh, other things. Uh, no, no, actually I completely agree with you because even if we work as a consultancy business in competition, uh, what we face is lawyers, judge, and they do not have the economic background. So always the simplest is always the better because if we try to explain very complex mechanism in economics or in econometrics uh, we will lose them and our report will finish in can so we cannot do that so you have to always try to be very simple in your reasoning and try to present it um, so that um, someone with no economical background will understand I will add one point uh, on this. Uh, if you find someone benevolent, uh, when you, you present your job to this guy, uh, it will be okay with, uh, with what, uh, what you tell. But uh, if, you aren't, uh, if you met someone a little bit skeptical, they, uh, without uh, an economic background, he will, not, uh, he will be not able to judge you uh, on, the, um, on the content of what you say. So it will judge you on the, on the shape of what you say, of what you present. It, it is a, a very um, uh, frustrating for, for us, but at this moment, uh, your message must be clear, simple, and well presented, because you will be judged on the, the only thing, they, uh, the only thing they can judge you, it is the presentation you, uh, you make. It, uh, is your PowerPoint a, a good PowerPoint or not? It is a, a, a reality of consultancy. But I will have to add something. Even if you have to present it in a very simple way, you can work on very difficult models as we do on Deloitte when we work on um, high, um, uh, real, um, I'll say that on very difficult major cases, we sometimes have to develop very complex model, but when we present it to competition authority or the European competition, we have to simplify it. But uh, under this very really soft model we present, they are 
a lot of complexity. And I'm pretty sure in statistics is the same. You can use very complex model, but when you talk to your manager or your director, you try to keep it simple. Yes. <laughs> So please do not hesitate to ask any question you want about our background, what we do on an everyday basis in English and French, we will be able to, to enter it. Um, about, about what you just said, uh, what kind of model can you use typically? Like what kind of difficulty can you use? Uh, I think the most complex issue we, we face when we work on competition cases or uh, or litigation cases is the lack of data. And um, say statistics, I guess, Jean. But uh, yeah, and sometimes we have to develop very complex econometrical model to try to um, correct this lack of data. The, um, yes, uh, the, the type of model you will, uh, you will use is very, very dependent on, the, on, on your job. Uh, for uh, currently at NXP, uh, I, I work with, uh, with with the with, with people that are producing uh, a, a volume of data that is uh, that is just amazing. Uh, so um, for for this for this mission, uh, the you you face some challenge. Uh, the, the type of challenge that you can meet is uh, how we can handle the, the data fast, uh, where the information uh, and what is the relevant information. Uh, in my previous experience in the consultancy, that was very, very different. And uh, at this moment, I totally agree with, uh, with Mathieu. Uh, my manager uh, came to me and asked, uh, okay, where we can find data about that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and at this moment, uh, if you work in a small company, in a small team, when you are generally the, the only economic, uh, economic guy, you, will, uh, you have to, to know where you can find some robust, uh, robust data. And data. Uh, generally, you, you can rely on, uh, on international institution. It is a rather, rather good uh, uh, good app for, for data, but there is a lot of precise and uh, pre precise data that you that you cannot uh, have uh, a, a regular way. Um, so uh, generally, you you have to buy them, and after, depending on the data you have and the problem you face, you are deploying uh, a different model. Uh, often you have to, de uh, to decide what kind of model you are using. So it is not uh, a real problem if you, are, uh, if you are not very proficient on uh, uh, this kind of model. Uh, um, uh, are you very good with a logistic mod model? It's, it's not a big deal if you are not. Just know when to use it because at the moment you will need it, uh, you have to know where you, you will look to, uh, to deploy such kind of model for example, but uh, well, it will very depend on the, on the problem you will face in your job. Um, Mathieu yes, and um, Jean, I had, a, I had a small question I wanted to ask as well. Sometimes students um, ask the question, are you uh, coming from TSC uh, compared to like big engineering schools? Um, do you think that the TSC training, uh, some students might say when they go to an HR department or whatever, and they might not know, we're, we're a lot better known now as TSC, but what is the difference? Do you think the TSC is, uh, is coming alongside with engineering skills? Do you think we're better than some engineering skills? Because, um, and any tips for, um, for the students who are actually looking for internship or a job, um, you know, what is, what is the, the, the tips to give to be the, the kind of perfect candidate for a position in one of your companies? Sorry, a few questions in one. Uh, Jean, do you want to start or? As you want, as you want. 
So I will start with the engineering schools and TSC. I think both uh, help students to think in a certain way. We do not ask you to be proficient in everything, but to know how to look when you face um, a problem, like Jean told us just before. So if you don't know a kind of econometrical model, it's not a problem. But if you know how to look on Google to try to understand how it works, how it will be implemented with the data we have on R, on SATA, I don't know, every software you can use to do that. I think this is the most important things. And in TSC, you learn that. Even if you don't know that, we see it when we receive, because we have a lot of intern at, at Deloitte and specifically my team in the economic advisory department. And we, we saw that, that TSC students are able to really quickly find a way to understand how a model works, where the data could be and stuff like that. So I think it's the most important thing you can, can try to, to develop when you, when you talk about you. I, I know it's very difficult. And the second part is you are able to use a lot of statistical software like R and Stata. And in my, in my job, the, the two software are used a, a lot. Actually, in competition, we have to use Stata because it's the official software of competition authority all around the world. So for the French Competition Authority and the European, European Commission, we have to give them our code right in Stata. And for other missions, including with uh, high volume of data or anything else, when we have to present some beautiful that, um, dashboard and stuff like that, we use R. So both software that you learn how to use in, in, in TSC. So please continue to, to work on these two software. No, it's, it's it's great what you're saying. It's great what you're saying, Matthew, because this is what a lot of HR people and um, recruitment talent acquisition directors and things have said to me when we're trying to, I mean, it's uh, thanks to people like yourself and who promote TSC and that we are really referenced as one of the top schools in Deloitte. Now we're in the top 10 as, uh, as um, the best schools. So as one of their target schools. So it's really something that we thrive to do at the school. So it's, and we see by the tutors, by the professional tutors that um, the feedback that we get uh, is really the skills that students have when they come to an internship and the way they can analyze in this, uh, the, this way of thinking, as you said before, is a real plus. So now I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> it's now Jean's turn. <laughs> Yes, uh, I will be a little bit less um, uh, happy about that. Not not exactly happy, but uh, I have a, um, a song um, not uh, not exactly uh, as enthusiastic as you. Um, compared to to gener uh, generalistic engineers, uh, you lack nothing for for doing a, a job of statistics of or economics. Uh, compared to highly specialized uh, school like uh, um, Polytechnic or NSAE and NSAE, uh, you, you, uh, you are in face of strong competitors uh, and uh, well, not, uh, well, uh, well installed uh, competitors, in fact. So when you are, uh, when you are going to, um, to an interview with um, with a, a company or an administration, particularly in Paris, uh, they are not always aware uh, that uh, TSC exists and they are not always convinced that TSC is a good school. Uh, so uh, it, it really depends on where you are, land uh, where you are landing during the interview. Uh, in, in my experience, uh, I have uh, I had a, a, often the, the demonstration to, to do during the interview that uh, I, TSC gave me uh, every, every tool I need to, to do the job. Um, one, uh, one last point. Uh, I often, um, uh, I was implied in the recruitment process of my last company uh, and I faced uh, engineers and I faced uh, students from TSC. We, we hired some, so it was a, a good, a very good experience. But um, 
I remember uh, a critics of uh, of my former manager in that case, and he he was um, he was a little bit unhappy with uh, economic students uh, to be not um, uh, to be not as concrete as uh, he he would wish. So if uh, when you are in your first job, uh, try to be uh, result driven. Try to um, to go beyond the the very research uh, orientation that you are following during your studies. This is a very good formation, but uh, when you are in your job, you are not uh, in a lab. You are not uh, in an office writing a research paper. You are producing a report. You are working for something that will be published in maybe one month, maybe three months, but uh, it will be published shortly, not in two years in, uh, in, a, research, uh, in a research review that will be uh, read uh, once again two years later. later. No. Uh, so um, a be drive, uh, result, uh, result driven. Okay, thanks very much for that. Who else has got some questions? Huh? Um, hello, um, so I have questions. Um, actually, I was wondering uh, what type of career opportunities or job uh, can we hope to have after complete the EMO? Because I'm truly interested in doing this, but um, let's say I'm interested in the sector of um, regulation, um, market regulation sector, competition authority, but I, don't, I still don't know um, the specific jobs that I can uh, apply for. So this is my question. It will be the question of your life. <laughs> but actually, uh, like, like, like you can see today, you, you can find a very different job uh, after the, the EMO uh, masters. So Jean is a statistician. I'm an economist working in the consulting firm. We have friends working in competition authority, also in regulation authority, in the telecom re regulation authority in French, the RCEP, uh, also in RTE. Um, the electricity regulator in France. So you, I would say you can do everything, no, maybe not, but uh, you have a wide range of opportunity uh, after the, the MO. Um, to, to complete a little bit uh, the answer, uh, it, it depends on what you, what you really want. And uh, it is very, I, I know that this, this is difficult. Uh, at uh, during your study to to have a clear view the the job market is is not transparent uh, on on this side but uh, you can uh, you can still see some uh, some things uh, quite clear you have all the administration of regulation uh, so Mathieu mentioned uh, RTE the the French uh, competition authority N not specifically the French uh, by uh, uh, you, you, by definition, you you have an, a competition authority in uh, in every country. Uh, in France, you have a lot of uh, specific uh, administration dedicated to to regulation uh, that are linked to to some sectors. You have uh, the ASEP for the telecom. You may heard uh, a lot about them because there was action for the five G. In, uh, in telecoms. You have uh, the ARAFER, the authority for, for French railroad. Uh, I forget the others. Uh, yes. Well, you have CSA for the, for the... Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You have the CSA for, um, for, uh, for the video content in, uh, in French. Uh, in France, sorry. And there is other uh, other um, authorities, uh, uh, financial market uh, authority, uh, the AMF. Well, you have a lot of administration. This is uh, this is uh, administration that are that are hiring uh, new um, new graduate people. Um, what kind of uh, what kind of um, for, for the company when you are uh, when you are searching for for job or internship. You, you can start by this administration. They are well known. So uh, made a quick Google research. 
you, you find them. When, uh, you can browse a little bit on internet to look uh, on, the, on the specific industrial sectors. And inside the sector, you will find some, uh, a, a lot of name of companies operating in their market. With that, you can establish a very big list of authorities and companies. And in addition, if you, if you want, you uh, still can, uh, can browse uh, on, the, um, uh, on the administration, uh, the executive administration, particularly Bercy. I know they are publishing a lot of, uh, of new, um, new job for, for graduates. So there is, a, there is also opportunities uh, from uh, uh, on this side. Um, just for the job of economist, if you open to data science and statistics, it is very, very f uh, more open and more, uh, in, in fact, for, for everything that, uh, that is about data science and statistics, you will have a, a different matter not to find the, um, uh, the different job offers, but to, to filter the job offer to the one that is relevant to your profile. In fact, I just wanted Thank to you. say as well, you have also the BND, you have the career forum that you've already participated in quite a lot. This year, it's going to be uh, totally new because it's going to be uh, via virtual uh, format. So um, a lot of the regulation companies come every year. Um, all of those that Jean mentioned uh, participate. So um, I don't know if you're in L3 or M1. I'm not quite sure um, what year you're in, but um, um, you can participate in the presentations they give. So that would probably be really interesting and you have maybe a one-to-one -one, um, conversation with the people that come to, um, to on the 27th. It's going to be the 27th of November. Okay, sure. Thank you for the answer. I have another one question, please. Um, mm -hmm. For you, what do you think about uh, uh, starting an internship in a authority, uh, in a competitive authority, rather than directly entering into a into um, a consulting company? Uh, actually, it can be a good thing because you, if you want to work in, in, in a consulting firm or in authority, you can always see the, the other side. So I'm working in a consulting firm, but I, I do not have the same view as the one who works uh, for the French Competition Authority or the European one. So I, I think it could be great to have this, this other point of view on uh, on different cases like uh, you know uh, when i try to defend someone who are in a cartel it's not exactly the same thing that an authority would try to uh, to condemn them so i think it's great to have both sides but is beginning by one doesn't affect the possibility to after that continue with another mm, actually no you know you, you can do both it's not a, there's no problem after I'm a little bit uh, outside of, uh, of this business, but uh, I think this is a contrary, in fact, uh, that uh, it is a way to enter the, um, uh, these sectors uh, on, this, uh, on one side or on another. Uh, when, uh, when you look at the, uh, at the track of uh, some other alumni, they're, they're exactly what they make. It was starting in... Um, in, uh, in one authorities or in one consulting company working on one subject and once they have gained th this, uh, this experience in, uh, in their field, they go on, uh, on the other side. Uh, and the, this movement can be made on both sides. So uh, um, it, it, can be a, it can be a way to, to work, in fact. I think, uh, once again, I'm not in, in this business. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Uh, yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I'm looking to to work in abroad. So, do you think that I should uh, concentrate myself on statistics today, or the UMO master should be relevant to to do this way? Sorry, I did not understand uh, in what you are. So, yeah, what uh, you are I, doing today. To, I wanted to to work in international company. Okay. So do you think that uh, this master's is really relevant for me to, to do that or 
a master with only statistical stuff and other things should be better? I think you are, uh, your, your question is, uh, is a little bit misleading. Uh, the fact that you want to work in an international company uh, does not uh, does not provide you any any hint to to which master you you would you should do. Uh, ask you what job you do you want to to do in that company. Uh, if you want to do a, an economic job, go to the emo market uh, master. Sorry. Uh, if you want to to do data science, go to to statistical courses. Just. Uh, I have another question. Uh, hmm? Did uh, your grades during the master somehow have like an influence in the first internships or in the first jobs you got? Uh, yes. Uh, you have a, a lot of companies that, uh, that are asking you the, the last grade you, you have during your, your exams. So uh, yes, it is important. Yeah, I agree with John. Excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. Can you just repeat what you just said? Because I didn't hear it. Okay. Uh, about the grades. Yes, about the grades. Uh, so uh, is, uh, is your, your grade during the exam uh, important? And the, um, the answer is quite, is very simple. Yes. You have, uh, you have companies uh, that are, are asking you your, your exams, uh, well, not your exam, but your, your grades uh, during the, the hiring process. Only the grade of my, my last uh, year or the grade of my bachelor and everything? Actually, it depends. Some consulting firm asks you uh, since uh, okay. the undergraduate. So it depends on, okay. on the companies and the human resources policies inside them. Okay, thank you. And for example, uh, you, Mathieu, if it doesn't matter, you to tell us uh, like how good were you in, um, in the mastery? Actually, for my company, it doesn't have any importance at all because we, we do not ask any, uh, any of your marks during exams. We only focus on your resume and on the several uh, round of interviews we, we make with you. So it doesn't have any importance. But I, I know if you want to work for, I think, Compass, Compass Economics, you will have to give them your, um, your, um, your mark. Um, I have a question. Um, so, what, what, what kind of tips, uh, what kind of interview tips uh, can you share? I mean, it's kind of uh, when applying for the job in your own company or another company, in general, if you can share. Uh, yeah. Um, so, two, two advice. Don't to be overconfident. It's very, very annoying when you are an interviewer. So, and uh, don't be too shy about your, your knowledge. So just be between. You know certain things. There are all the things you don't know and that's why you will make some internship to develop your knowledge, your skills. So it's normal sometimes to don't know something. And yeah, I think if I have to give you two advices, it will be that. I don't know, Jean, if you have other one? Um, yes, yes. Uh, what? Uh, first, don't play a role. Uh, you you are in front uh, of uh, of people. They want to hide you, uh, and don't try to uh, to speculate uh, uh, on what they want to hear. Uh, just answer the the way you. Uh, you would just with friends or well, uh, be formal, just. Um, so don't uh, don't try to to play a, a role of the perfect uh, uh, dynamic young guy, uh, golden boy. What you want, uh, every everything you want. You are you, and uh, this is what uh, what, um, what is interesting for the people you are you have in front of you. Uh, second, uh, second advice for me is work. 
uh, don't go just uh, in, in the interview uh, without doing your homework. Uh, this is very important uh, for me if you are working less than uh, half a day for one interview, uh, it is that you don't want the job. Uh, it is no point to, to go into, uh, into the interview at this moment. It's up to you. Um, for me, it is the two, two main points. Um, the first one, because I see people in interview, I was in a hiring position at this moment. And uh, this is very, very uh, tiring to, to, see, uh, to see someone uh, pretending to, to be uh, someone he is not. So uh, at the end, you just, uh, you just write uh, uh, on, uh, on his resume, uh, uh, go to the archive and uh, you, you forget this, um, this candidate. Uh, and on the second point, it is uh, from, my, uh, from my job research experience. Uh, if, you, if you just go to, to one interview without working for it, okay, mm, there will be competitors with more experience, with more, and with, with more motivation, and they will go first. Completely agree with Jean. And please remember that the people in front of you want to hire you, so they will spend a lot of hours working with you. So if you're not completely honest with them, First, we saw that because we have some kind of habits to see that, that kind of things during the interview. And for the second part, um, what was your second part, John? Uh, working for doing your homework. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's a good way to, to, more, to show your interest in company if you have some question, relevant question, not general question. But it proves that you work on this, on this interview and you are motivated to to have this job or, or internship and stuff like that. And John, I'm pretty sure we have to go back in the other room for the, for the final part of this um, alumni talk. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Welcome. So if you want to go back to the other link, we will close this uh, alumni uh, talk and answer Perfect. other question if there is any. Perfect. Okay. So see you in the next room. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you very much. Thank you. Some maybe a, a last um, comments. Um, I hope you I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, the exchange with the different students. Uh, um, I don't know if anybody else has any uh, any final questions. Est-ce qu'il y a des questions encore à poser? Yeah, one. Please. I also have one question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I think uh, Lixan was first, so go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so at your time at TSE, when you were uh, looking for a job and uh, an internship, did you make the choice to send uh, to apply for um, a job at one company, or did you send your CV to two or three companies? The question, who's the question for? Is the question for Jean, for Magali, yeah, for, or for uh, everybody? For, um, anyone. It's, uh, <laughs> actually. Okay, Jean, on you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, you try to target company you are interested in, uh, company, administration, whatever you want. Uh, try to apply to, to a job you want. Uh, but after, Try uh, also to uh, to send application to a lot of companies because uh, the main part of your application will be um, will be rejected. Okay, so it would be it would be a mistake to send just my CV to one company. I, I guess. to one only. Yes, it is a mistake. Sure, but uh, think... the one you want, send uh, send your CV. Yeah, clearly, clearly. Thank I you. think I said, I don't know if you were in the last one, but I said, so I'm saying the same question for everybody at the same time. Um, but something that can be uh, really interesting for you all is uh, we'll be sending you information for the next Business Networking Day on the 27th of November. It's going to be a, a virtual format. We'll probably have between 50 and 60 companies, the same type of companies that participated and institutions last year. So this is a great opportunity um, to participate in the presentations to have a video chat, to have an interview and things like that. So um, you can keep tuned to that as well. 
I think Xavier, I had a question. Yeah, mine was more for Mathieu because I'm more interested in consulting, but I don't know if you have this information, if you know how many, how many candidates uh, for internships, uh, for like a consulting internships uh, does a firm like Deloitte have every year, has every year? Uh, actually a lot. Uh, just last, last month we received 250 applications. For 2021? Yeah. Okay. But we, we do not uh, plan uh, as many uh, interviews as we receive uh, applications. And obviously. what's like the first filter? That, but because I suppose there's there's a filter it's even me. before. <laughs> First is I mean, filter is made by me. I, I, I mean receive like, any application uh, sent to Deloitte, and I made uh, the first field. Okay, that's good okay. to know. Uh, Mathieu, Mathieu, is it really important? I mean, everybody asks the same question, like a really good CV, cover letter. Um, you know, obviously when like there's some like consulting companies, I know that you have to apply online and you don't really need the cover letter. Um, you know, is, is Deloitte uh, really important to have yet yeah, like the CV cover letter? Do you prefer to have it in French? Do you prefer to have it in English? Would you, um, would you accept if someone was sending an, an English CV? You know, what is the... Uh, actually, the, the language of the, CV, of the resume and the cover letter is not a problem. You can write it in French or in English. We are both, we are fluent in both, so it's not a problem. But uh, before we do not ask a candidate to send with their resume a cover letters. And we, we decide this year to strongly advise people to join a cover letters when they candidate to our position as junior or our intern, because most of the time, uh, the people who take the time to write a really good cover letters are really motivated to get that job. So it's it's kind of the first filter we, we made. So because we receive a lot of candid, uh, on candidates and yeah, the first filter is is there um, a cover letter or not. But we will look every every uh, apply on application on our website, but it's always a good way to add a cover letter. It's a plus on your application. And is it is it uh, precious to have a personal contact in the company, like uh, through LinkedIn or through mail? If we get the mail of the of a manager, for example, or something, is it yeah. valuable? It, it can help, of course. Uh, also, a talk with us during the business networking day. It's, uh, it's also a, a good way to to try to understand a little bit more what we do at Deloitte. But yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good way, but uh, we also cannot answer, I don't know, to 2000 message on, on LinkedIn and stuff like that. So it's a good way, yes, but uh, we clearly we do not have time to answer every message we, we receive on, on LinkedIn and stuff like that. So, so Deloitte yeah. is going to be present in the VND? Yeah, yeah, of course. And are it's they going to- Always a good thing to try to contact an alumni because it, it can take, more time to you to explain exactly what we do. And uh, most of the time, yeah, people do that. And uh, yeah, we... the, the list, uh, the list of the, the companies will probably be giving and giving maybe in the next 15 days, because this year has is totally different because we usually have, this is the first time that um, we're going to be working um, with an American company called Easy Virtual Fair. Uh, they are specialized in virtual career fairs all around the world. Uh, you know, companies, uh, universities like MIT, Oxford, um, use, uh, use them. So we're going to be using them this year for the Business Networking Day. So it's um, probably, I would say, in the next um, couple of weeks, uh, we'll be sending you all information who's going to be um, um, present. Um, but not only that, um, you'll be able to um, apply on the TSC alumni websites. That's why I wanted to introduce you all to Nina, who is who's going to give you a wave, I hope. Um, Nina is in charge of, of the alumni network, a really, really important person at the school because she um, is the one that will give you your connections uh, to be able to apply on the TSC alumni website. That's where all the job and the internship offers are. Um, you can you can correct me if I'm if I'm not right, uh, Nina. But I think 
everybody should be getting their connections over the next couple of weeks, uh, next week or so. Uh, yeah, normally tomorrow. I ah, guess. brilliant. So as of tomorrow, um, not only that, but we'll be contacting all the companies uh, at next week uh, um, to see if um, there is internship offers. Uh, I, th I think Matthew already uh, posted one already. So he's doing a really good job. Thank you, Matthew, for Deloitte. Um, but over the next couple of weeks, uh, the companies will be starting to post their internship offers. So you will be able to see um, on TSU and Limini website, BND and the offers that are going to be available that you can um, apply to. I just want to thank Jean, Magali and Mathieu. Uh, Claire, I already thanked. I really want to thank, this is the first time we've done this. I think it's been a really good success uh, with the amount of participants. I don't have the number but we have got quite a few students that participated. Um, so it's been really great. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're really, really busy. And so it's, it's been great that you managed to find time for us. So we really, really appreciate it. 